Assalamu alaikum fam. Hope you're doing well. We haven't been reading for a while this sort of law and as you know it has read like a charm. One of the best books ever. The way in which we review it, we dig into it, we peel it apart, we learn a lot. The writer is wonderful. R reads like a movie I must say. I mean if you like action movies and you want to read a book about action, I gotta say it's wonderful to read. And as I learned, uh, Mugira was his dad. Okay, so let's begin. We're in chapter 16, the Battle of Yamama. May all be pleased with our reading. Let's continue. When Abu Bakr organized the Muslim forces into 11 corps at Zukisa, so we have Zukisa, 11 corps. He appointed Ikrama, okay, Ikrama, son of Abu Jahl. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Whoa. That's Abu Jahl has a son who fought for the Muslims. I mean, you guys maybe know, but hey, I'm learning. As the commander of one of them. Ikrama's orders were to advance and make contact with the forces of Muslima, the liar, at Yamama. And remember, Muslima called himself a prophet. What a loser. But not to get involved in battle with the imposter. Abu Bakr knew better than most of his generals that the power and ability of Muslima and did not wish to risk fighting him with insufficient forces since Khalid was his finest general. The caliph had made up his mind to use him to deal with Musima after he had finished with the other enemies of Islam. So awesome. What have we learned so far? Abu Bakr has 11 corps at Zukisa. Ikrama, the son of Abu Jahl, is leading the forces against Musima, the liar, and he's about, I think, to get spanked by Halid. Abu Bakr's intention in giving Ikrama this mission was to tie Musima down at Yamama. With Ikrama on the horizon, the liar would remain in expectation of a Muslim attack and thus not be able to leave his base. <laughs> so he's gotten like situated by, okay, if we abandon this post, we might get looted and raided. But stay and prepare for an attack. So preventing him from moving. Quite cool. Look at that strategy. With Musima so committed, Halid would be free to deal with the apostate tribes of North Central Arabia without interference from Yamama. So look at that. Distracting them, right? So while Musima is bunkered down in Yamama, Halid is spanking uh, North Central Arabia. <laughs> In selecting Ikrama for this task, Abu Bakr had picked a valiant man. Moreover, Ikrama was anxious to prove his devotion to Islam and atone for his violent hostility to the Holy Prophet before his entry into the new faith. So that's interesting, right? So that's another example of someone who was once an enemy to hinder the religion, then turns to fight for it, right? Think about also how that was a slap in the face to Abu Jahl, right? That's, that's, a, that's a lesson. Ikrama advanced with his corpse and established a camp somewhere in the region of Yamama. The location of his camp is not known. From this base, he kept the forces of the Bani Hanifa. So Bani Hanifa, I like learning all these cool tribes. Under observation while awaiting the instruction from the Caliph. And the presence of Ikrama had the desired effect of keeping Musima in Yamama. However, whether or not he had any intention of ever leaving Yamama, we do not know. When Ikrama received reports of the defeat of Tuleha by Halid, Okay, so let's remember that. So T-U-L-E-I-H-A. So 
Another one. Halid put him in the dust. He began to get impatient for battle. The waiting irked his fiery temperament. <laughs> He's not the only one who's fiery. Ikrma was a fearless man and a forceful general, but he lacked Halid's cool judgment and patience, qualities which distinguished the bold commander from the rash one. Okay, very good point. So think about that. Bold versus rash. Rash also implies like you... The heat of the moment made you go quickly, right? You might win being rash. And you might lose being bold. But bold does have an essence of better judgment in many cases, right? So you can see how they mean it. The next development that Ikrima heard of was that Shurah Bil bin Hassana was marching to join him. Shurah Bil too had given a corpse by the Caliph with orders to follow Ikrima and await further instructions. So look at that. Shura, S-H-U-R-A-H-B-E-E-L Bin Hassana So we have Tuleha, right? We have Ikrama. We have Shurabil. We have Halid. We have Abu Jahal. We have Abu Bakr. We have the corpse at Zukisa. Right? We have Muslima the liar. Good to keep all these names in mind. In a few days, Shurah Bil would be with him. Then came the news of how Halid had routed the forces of Salma, the queenly leader of men. Ikrama could wait no longer. Why let Halid win all the glory? Why wait for Shurah Bihil? Why not have a crack at Muslima himself? If he could defeat Muslima single-handed, he would win glory and renown such as would eclipse the achievements of all others. Aha! So, <laughs> Halid routed the forces of Salma. So another one for Halid, Salma. Okay, so Halid, he spanked Tuleha, he spanked Salma. All right, boom, Whoosh. and now there's another dilemma of who's gonna get spanked next? Who? Tell me who. And what a delightful surprise it would be for the caliph. Ikrama set his corpse in motion. This happened at the end of October 632, end of Rajab 11 Hijri. Okay, so 632, and then Rajab. 11 Hijri. Keep these dates in mind. Because somebody asked me, like, when was the Battle of Butter? And they asked you, and we should know. Right? A few days later, he was back in his camp, having received a sound thrashing from Muslima. Chastened and repentant, he wrote to Abu Bakr and gave him a complete account of his actions, including the inglorious outcome. Inglorious, right? It's like, ah. Should Abil also heard the bad news and stopped some distance short of Ikrama's camp. Abu Bakr was both pained and angered by the rashness of Ikrama and his disobedience of the orders given to him. Okay, so remember Abu, okay, so Abu Bakr, he gave Ikrama orders. He wanted some glory, failed. Remember the story about the archers on the hill? Where how they saw the other Muslims running toward Budi, gave up the position, and that was a time when Halid caused them problems. Remember before he became a Muslim? So two cool examples in the history where you should, you know, really try to follow the orders, especially if your leaders are well-seasoned. He made no attempt to conceal his anger in the letter that he wrote to Ikrama. O oh, son of the mother of Ikrama, he began. This was a polite way of expressing doubt regarding the identity of the man's father. Do not let me see your face. 
your return under these circumstances would only weaken the resolve of the people. Oh, geez. So it's like the, the, the patriarchal lineage point is pretty potent, right? And then here, it's like your mere presence, because you screwed up, is going to make the morality go down. <laughs> Someone's in trouble. Proceed with your forces to Uman to assist Huzeifa. Okay, so H U Z E I F A. Huzeifa to Uman. Okay, to Uman. Once Huzeifa has completed his task, march to Mahra to help Arfaja. Okay, so we have another one here. A R F A J A. Arfaja. Okay, at Mahra. To M A H R A. So look at all these locations we have here. Yamama, we have uh, Mahra, we have these different areas. Wow, it's really amazing, right? Yemen. And thereafter, go to Yemen to help Mujahir. Okay, so another one, another person, right? So M U H A J I R. So let's review the names because we got to know who everybody is, all right? No excuses. So Muslim of the Liar, Abu Bakr, Khalid, Ikrama, Shurabil bin Hassana, Muhajir, Arfaja. We had the tribe Bani Hanifa, right? Wow, we just got so much going on over here. I remember North Central Arabia, Yemen. I shall not speak to you until you have proven yourself. So look at that. Abu Bakr's like, don't even show your face. I'm not even going to talk to you right now. He's really grilling him. Right? Until you have proven yourself in further trial. So I'm not even going to talk to you until you make up for your mistakes. Three men to be assisted were among the 11 corpse commanders. Smarting under the shame of his ignominious repulse at the hands of Musima and the harsh words of the Caliph, Ikrama took his corpse and, by passing Yamama, marched to Uman. Shurabil remained in the region of Yamama to ensure that he did not fall into the error of Ikrama. Abu Bakr wrote to him, Stay where you are and await further instructions. <laughs> so look at that, Abu Bakr's like, hey. Don't even go the Ikrama route. Shurabil, stay where you are. It could be tempting, right? So it's like you see how Halid routed the forces at Salma. I mean, routed the forces of, of Salma. And, you know, maybe you want a piece of that. So he decided not to wait for Shurabil, not to wait for Halid, and to try to take on Musima himself. And it didn't really work. And very embarrassing, truly embarrassing. Wow, the sound thrashing. Oh my goodness, embarrassing. Wow, what do you think, fam? It's pretty intense, right? Mashallah, we learned quite a lot. The Battle of Yamama, and then don't worry, another reading will go further. Okay, you have a good day, fam.